Good morning, Ebenezer family. Uh, it's just so good to be back uh, with you on this day. Um, aren't you glad that this is definitely the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, God has been so good to all of us. I just want to uh, continue to lift up the Bree families, all those who are going through. And also just want to thank God for what he's doing in our lives, how he's showing uh, so much grace and mercy. Uh, just a, a few announcements today. Uh, thank you for uh, connecting to ebcnc.com and just all the things that we have just to encourage you in your walk with the Lord. I uh, want to encourage you to stay in the Word. Uh, keep reading your Bibles. We have those um, Bible reading plans, and we want you to really dig in deep because these are the times that God is just using um, the body in an amazing way. Uh, also, uh, the other day, uh, Governor Cooper came on, and there is a new uh, program that uh, he has instituted to help us to understand more of uh, the COVID rates, the positivity rates. Uh, you can see within that picture that I put up uh, that North Carolina is going through. It seems that we are on a curve upwards. That is not good. So I pray for you as you're going into your Thanksgiving season and even to the uh, Christmas season. Please, please be careful. Wear your mask, social distance, especially as uh, students are leaving college, coming home, families want to intermingle. I know it's tough, but please be aware uh, COVID is raging. And because of that, we're having to make uh, decisions on um, some other platforms and some other things uh, within Ebenezer to make sure that we are hearing the voice of the Lord as we go forth in this season. So we ask you to please continue to pray for all the families of Ebenezer that we definitely be covered uh, from this COVID and other things that are going on. Um, also, thank you so much for your giving. Uh, I love 2 Corinthians and 9-7. It says, so let each one give uh, as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. In this season and time, I've just been thinking God has been providing for us in spite of. Uh, I've been hearing about you know people making runs on stores again. But I, I want you to not operate out of fear but to walk in faith. We're going to talk about that uh, a little later in the message. We are uh, called to walk by faith and not by sight. And notice 2 Corinthians 9, 8. It said, And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. I love this part, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. I'm telling you, God is faithful. Well, after this next song, I'm going to come back. God's put another word on my heart. See you soon. As soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, and I let go and I let God, I let God have his way. That's when things start happening, when I stop looking at back then, and I let go and I let God, I let God have his way. I couldn't seem to fall asleep, there was so much on my mind. I was searching for that peace, but the peace I could not find. So then I knelt down to pray. I was praying, help me please. He said, you don't have to cry, cause I'll supply all your needs. As soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, and I let go and I let God, I let God have his way. That's when things start happening, when I stop looking at back then. And I let go and I let God, I let God have his way. I couldn't seem to fall asleep. 
There was so much on my mind. I was searching for that peace. But the peace I could not find. So then I knelt down to pray. I was praying, help me please. He said, you don't have to cry. Cause I'll supply all your needs. As soon as I stop worrying. Worrying how the story ends. And I let go and I let God I let God have his way That's when things start happening When I stop looking at back then And I let go and I let God I let God have his way so just let go And let God you got to let go, and you got to let God. You got to let go, and you got to let God. Oh, let go, and let God. You got to let go. You got to let God. You got to let go, and you got to let God. You got to let go, and you got to let God. Oh, let go. And let God, oh, let go. And he got to let God. You got to let go. And he got to let God. You got to let go. And he got to let God. Oh, let go. And let God. As soon as I stop worrying, worrying how the story ends, and I let go and I let God I let God have his way That's when things start happening When I stop looking at back then And I let go and I let God I let God have his way I pray you were blessed by that song. I just thank God for the gifts that he gives to the body and um, how he just continues to draw us together to him. Uh, today, I'm excited about this word. Uh, we have been on this journey with an encounter uh, with God, and I pray that your relationship has increased. And uh, God is not finished with us. He wants so much more uh, in our relationship with him. Uh, this COVID-19 pandemic has been extended, and I believe so that we really can know God in a deep way, and also that the world can see him exemplified uh, within our lives. Well, well, let's pray before we jump into this section today. Father, I thank you so much for who you are. Uh, Lord, thank you for how you've just allowed everything to come together, that uh, we truly, each one can reach one. Uh, even in this time of social distancing and mass, Lord, and uh, so many precautions that are put forth, I thank you, Lord, that you are still in charge. Now, Lord, maybe someone is uh, looking or viewing in or listening that does not know you. Would you help them to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised them from the dead and you said they would be saved. Let them know us by grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. Would you help them to receive that gift today? Now, Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, cleanse me of all unrighteousness, and Holy Spirit, I welcome you. You have never failed, and I'm excited about that. So, Holy Spirit, would you teach us and guide us and lead us into all truth? Would you make this word so plain and so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed to be like you? Thank you for changing us, God, from the inside out. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's go to uh, John chapter 20. Uh, John chapter 20, and I want you to focus in on that uh, 27th verse, John 20 and 27. It reads, Then he said, Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but 
believing. Listen to that again. John twenty twenty seven. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. I want to speak from a title today. Jesus is real. Jesus is real. On this journey, uh, we have seen and experienced many encounters with God. Remember, we started out with Moses at that burning bush, and uh, then we dealt with Jonah with that great fish, Uh, King Belshazzar with the handwriting on the wall, Uh, Abraham and his intercession pleading for Lot and his family, righteous people that were in Sodom and Gomorrah, Uh, Philip and Nathaniel, those first disciples that were called their encounter with Jesus. And then on uh, last Sunday, we were with Cleophas and the other disciple as Jesus reveals himself and they get revelation. Um, From last time, we were in that Luke 24, 27. And beginning at Moses, all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And we talked about a title, It's in the Book. Just points in review. Uh, Only believe. Uh, He didn't take the easy way. The Word of God. I won't let go until you bless me. And again, revelation and heartburn. Uh, The time frame is about AD 33. Uh, We're still in that period uh, directly after the resurrection. Cleophas, the other disciples, um, have seen Jesus. But there is another one that has missed out, and I want to examine um, this particular uh, encounter today. And today we're going to talk uh, about Thomas. Thomas, uh, John 20 and 24 introduces this whole section and, and the whole parameters that are going on. It reads, Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. Our uh, first point of the day, and I really want you to process this because I've just been reading over this and it's just really been growing within my heart. Everything is for a reason. Everything is for a reason. I've been finding out in my life and, and as I look at other lives, so often we forget that God is in control. Um, he's all knowledge. He has omniscience. Um, He understands us and he knows where we're going because that is the nature of being God. So even when we're lost, even when we make mistakes, that doesn't cause God to make a mistake. That doesn't cause God to get lost. There ought to be some hallelujahs today because so often we, we, we can feel, you know, I wasted time here. And yeah, we made mistakes and God would have rather that we went directly and heard his voice. But God said, I still got it. I'm still able to work it out. If you notice within this scripture, it says Thomas called the twin. I love that introduction because it, it shows you that there, there are two people that uh, possibly look just alike. Uh, we know that we have twins that don't look alike, but Thomas was one of them. So he has someone who's closely related to him, but yet this Thomas that we're talking about is an individual. He has his feelings. He has his emotions and thoughts. One of the twelve. So uh, notice how the, the, the scripture is segmented again. He's called the twin. He's one of the twelve, and then it goes, but he was not with those that saw Jesus. So so now we've got to deal with why wasn't Thomas there? How how come all of a sudden he missed when Jesus showed up? That, That revelation, that understanding, seeing Jesus with his eyes. And I put before you... God wants to show us something greater within these scriptures today. I'm talking about Jesus is real. Uh, Ed Henson gives us a thought, a compelling thought on uh, just the picture of Thomas. Uh, No explanation is given for Thomas not being with the other disciples. Perhaps he was alone mourning the death of his master. Uh, Maybe he was going through and, and he was so overwhelmed uh, with grief and the, the 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 sight, the picture of his Savior being crucified and the blood coming down that cross, that now he's just overcome with the thoughts of that. We talked about on last week. We have to be careful that we don't allow grief 
uh, to steal our faith. We don't allow grief to steal our joy. Here Thomas has missed uh, the, the occurrence of Christ. He's missed Christ coming back. The fact is that the Lord does know our going in and going out. And even when we find ourselves in places of despair, uh, find ourselves that uh, we miss out on something that's great, Proverbs 15.3 says something. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. And there ought to be some shouts. Isn't it good to know that God's eyes are on us? No matter where we are, we may feel that he's left us, but the scriptures say that he's never will uh, leave us or forsake us. He's always there, even when we don't realize it. He's looking in on our situation and even is working it out for our good. Hallelujah. That's good. Uh, please know that nothing, and, and I said this before, but I want to emphasize it. Nothing is wasted with God. Uh, nothing is wasted with God. I want to say it one more time. Nothing is wasted with God with God. It said all things work to the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his plan and purpose and the, the master, the potter, he's able to put things together. He's able to work things out in your life. I'm talking about Jesus is real. I just want you to uh, take a flashback of your life. I want you to think all the things that God has brought you through. I want you to review all the times that you thought that you were all by yourself and then later you found out that God was always there. Hasn't God been good even in our stresses, even in our struggles, even in 2020 where so many things have happened? I am so glad to tell you today and I pray that you know this. Jesus is real. Look at John 20 and 25. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So Thomas said to them, listen to this. Unless I see his hands, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Wow. Here's another point. Please show me more. Please show me more. The disciples, the, the other 11, they, they, they say, hey, we, we've seen Jesus. He, he is alive. He is well. He's been resurrected just as he uh, said he would. And instead of Thomas embracing that information from uh, the, the disciples, his fellow disciples, his brothers in the Lord, guess what he says? He says, no, I, 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 need, to, I need to see more. <laughs> you, you, you're going to have to show me more. I can't just go off of what you're saying. And I guess the question that we process within our mind now, why was this such a struggle with him? But I believe if we were in that situation, we possibly would have had a similar struggle. We saw Jesus die. We saw them, them take his uh, limp body off of that cross and put him in that tomb. And, and so now that process, even though he did miracles, signs and wonders, we're still processing, can this be real? Uh, Thomas has an issue of believing what he cannot see. Well, let me say that again. He has an issue of believing what he cannot see. Uh, but, but I believe all of us have, have been challenged with that same thing, believing the things that we cannot see. But please understand that believing without seeing is the foundation of our faith. Yes, believing without seeing is is the foundation of our faith. Let me show you Hebrews 11 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. I, I, I've said this over and over. I've got some, some friends who are deaf, and so uh, they have been deaf all of their lives. They, they, they can't hear. They actually pick on me when uh, there's a loud noise and I hear it, or uh, someone yells and, 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 and I turn around. They, they laugh because they can't hear that, and, and that's the way they live. And so often within our lives, we are so uh, focused on our sight because that's what we, we've grown up with. That's what we know, what we see. And we tend to believe that what we see 
is real all the time. But I, I love to look at illusionists because uh, they're able to give us a sense that something is real that's not there. Maybe it's a sleight of hand. But I want you to know, as Christians, we go past that. Uh, we, we see through not just our physical eyes, but we see through our spiritual eyes. I'm talking about Jesus is real. In this scripture here, notice Thomas is struggling with the point and he says something. He says, you, you know, I, I, I got to see more. You, you're going to have to, he's going to have to show up and I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to have an identification process. I want to see the nail prints. I, I want to see it in his hands and in his side. Now, I, I love this part. I want you to realize, even though he's talking to the disciples, Jesus is not physically there. God still knows what's going on. Yes, he hears the whole conversation. Jesus could have showed up right then. But notice this next verse. This is compelling. John 20, 26, Jesus is real. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut. And stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Here's another point. Peace. Peace. Now, now I, 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 want, I want you to understand, I, I gave you that he was, Jesus was listening to the whole conversation, even though he wasn't physically there. But notice, Jesus waits a week and a day. I'm in a book, look at that, John 20, 26. And after Eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus has a way of, 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 of increasing our reach for him, uh, allowing us to stay a little bit in our despair uh, so that we really can grasp who he is. And, and I'm telling you, some of you may be going through right now. This is a season that uh, when we think about the pandemic, we want this to be over as quick as possible. But I'm, I'm thinking God is just stretching this a bit. He's stretching it out. We're, we're hearing about the vaccine and we're hearing all. And we're like, OK, we're, we're excited about that. And then um, the, the doctors are telling us, don't don't get too excited because it's going to take a time to get it out to the people. And, and we're asking. And when are we going to get back to normalcy? But I'm telling you, God is also working something in the background. He said, I'm going to stretch this out. Yeah, you, you, need a, you need another week and a day that you can still go through your emotions. You can realize who you are. And, and when, I, when I show up, when I, when I move, then you can encompass who I am. Notice he shows up and, and Thomas is there in the room. Jesus came and, and I, I don't want to miss out. The doors are shut. The, the doors are shut. And, and Jesus manifests himself. He stands in the midst of them. And so we understand within this scripture why he has to say this. Peace to you. You, I would have jumped. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm in the room with, with, the, with the guys. We just, we're just standing there or sitting. We're doing our thing. And then just Jesus just kind of materializes in the flesh in front. All of a sudden, everybody's shaken up. But Jesus, all oh, he gives these words, peace to you. It, it's okay. Just have peace because I am the Christ. I am the anointed one. I'm everything you need. I know you may be a little startled and even for Thomas, but I had to make this appearance so that Thomas faith could be increased in him. Uh, someone said he may not show up when you want him, but aren't you glad that he's always on time? But notice the Prince of Peace. He shows up in this amazing way. And we find out in Isaiah 9, 6, this was prophesied for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and yes, you got it, Prince of Peace. In our situations, in our seasons of, of our life that we're going through, please note this. God is saying, I am the Prince of Peace. I want to bring you peace that goes beyond all your understanding. Uh, God has been speaking to me over and over again. I believe that even within our groups and our bubbles, that there is a lot of fear that's going on. But God wants you to walk by faith. God wants you to stay out of fear. Remember that scripture. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind, but with all these things that are encompassing and bombarding us, we have a tendency to go to fear. But please understand, Jesus is real. He's saying, peace be unto you. 
Yes, when we get closer to God and we pray and we worship him and we seek him with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, we're elevated in his peace. There are going to be some situations that God is going to be, be able to put us in where we're going to be overcome by peace and we can know because Jesus is real. We can hear these words, peace be unto you. Look at John 20, 27. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands. Reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. That 28th verse. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Here's another point. What will it take for you to really believe? What will it take for you to really believe? Now, now Jesus, again, uh, he had insight because uh, he's God on the conversation, the things that Thomas asked. Jesus shows up, the door is being shut, told him, peace be unto you. And then he directly comes to Thomas. There ought to be some shouts here because I want to give you a point. God wants to have a direct encounter with you. There's so often that we, we come to know God in a sense through other people, through deacons' prayers and through the pastor, or through mothers of the church or daddies in the church. But please understand and there has to come a time that you have a direct encounter with God for yourself. Jesus speaks directly to Thomas. And he says, Thomas, please, I'm talking to you. He says, look at my hands. Can't you see that picture? Look at my hands. When he lifts up his hands, all of a sudden the nail prints are revealed. Now, I am amazed every time I talk about this that Jesus, he, he was raised from the dead with all power and glory. He could have erased the nail prints. He could have erased the prints that was in his side, but no, he left them there. When you get to glory, please understand this, and when you finally meet your Jesus, you will know it's him, not because of his color, not because of a picture that you saw, but you'll know him by his nail print hands. You'll know him by his pure side because he will forever carry those marks all oh, there'll be some hallelujahs out there he will forever carry those marks that he had for us he took those marks for us notice he says look at my hands reach your hand here he said and put it in my side N now do you know it's me he says don't be unbelieving but believing and then the revelation comes. He says, my Lord, my God. The priest John Boyce in 1600s, he actually writes this quote that kind of concises what's going on. Thomas acknowledged the divinity he did not see by the wounds he did see. Let me say that again. Thomas acknowledged the divinity he did not see by the wounds he he did see. I'm talking about Jesus is real. When he saw, when he saw those nail prints hands and when he saw his side, we, we don't have the evidence whether he actually reached in, but when he saw it, the process took place. But I'm so glad to have a God that even when we're in unbelief will guide us into belief. Can I say that again? Aren't you glad you have a God that even when you find yourself in unbelief, find yourself in fear, God can take you from unbelief to belief. He can take you from fear to faith. God can increase and God is so loving and kind. Aren't you glad that Jesus is real? Look at this final verse as we pull this together. John 20, 29. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Here's a final point. A very concise. I want to pull this all together. Just believe. Just believe. This revelatory point has come. Thomas understand, my Lord, my God. But Jesus gives us all this, this, this answer, this understanding. He says, Thomas, because you have seen me, that, that's great. You have believed. That's wonderful. But there is an added blessing. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I, I want to I want to give you something right here. Do you understand that we are in that blessed? We have not physically seen Jesus, but yet we believe. And God says, blessed to those blessings to those people who actually believe and have yet 
to see him. Oh my goodness. I have not seen him physically, but I know that he's real. Anybody out there know that he's real? Uh, Far said writes, he said, the, the surest evidence is the word of God. If God says a thing, we honor him by believing it, but we dishonor him by demanding additional evidence. We should believe simply because he said it and because he cannot lie or be mistaken. That's the kind of God that we serve. We've got to understand that God's word is true true. He is real. But the reality in our lives, all of us go through struggles. You remember Gideon in the Old Testament? Uh, God had given him a, a direct guidance. I, I need you to do this. And he says, God, I need more. I, I, you're going to have to put some dew out and you're going to have to take the dew away. I, I need to make sure that this is actually you that's talking to me. And how often in our lives, I know I've had, I, I, I've heard the voice of the Lord, but I said, God, can you just give me a sign? Can, can you can you use my wife? I, just, just today, I was I, I, I was praying through some things. I said I said I said Bianca, has God spoken to you? Has God given you a word? And she looked at me and said, Nope. I said, Well, you need to ask him again because I've been praying that that he'll move in another way. But please understand, it's just the voice of the Lord. When we can hear that still small voice, God will take us to a, a elevated point that we can know that we can trust him. Jesus is real. Please understand, even with Thomas at this point of revelation, God wants to take us to a point that as we're in this season and it's time that we can trust him. I'm so glad I'm thinking about the song by John. P. Key, you remember he said, Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel the Lord God Jesus all over me. Are there some witness out there? Anybody know that Jesus is real? I can feel him in my heart. I can feel him in my soul. I can even feel him from the crown of my head to my toes. And then he said, Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. That's why I know what happened on the cross of Calvary. Calvary is so important. It's real. He did take the nails in his hand. He did take the nails in his feet. He carried our sins and bore our griefs on that cross of Calvary. He was our intercessor that died. And you know what? They did take his body off of that cross. They did put it in the cold tomb. But now my Jesus is alive. He got up on the third day with all power and all glory. And because of that, no matter what we go through, we can trust him because Jesus is real. There ought to be some shouts out there that said, I know my God is real. And because he is real, I'm going to give a praise to him right now because he's been good to us. He's covered us and he's doing exceedingly abundantly above what we can dare ask or think. He's real. Yes, he's real. In this season, in this time, God wants us to get into his presence. He wants us to have a true encounter with him. And I, I, I pray that for you. I pray in this season that you're not growing away from God. It's, it's my concern. And I've, I've seen it. I've seen so many people, their faith seems to be waning. And things of the world are overwhelming them. But for the true saints out there, God is saying, truly, every day is supposed to be getting sweeter and sweeter. Our relationship with Christ should be coming stronger and stronger. And, and we have the word of God that is true. It's already told us that there are going to be days like this. There are going to be things that are going to be occurring. There are going to be uh, occurrences in the heavens that are going to happen. We, we're seeing that right now. It, it said that men's hearts are going to wax cold. We're, we're, we're seeing that right now. All of these things are coming to fruition. But God is saying, trust me, I left you here for a reason. And because of that, the closer you get to me, the more you begin to shine of me. You know, in these dark times, people need to see Jesus. Yes, you, you make that correlation. Jesus showed up. In front of Thomas and said, look at my hands, look at my side, touch it. So, so how is he manifested now? Through us, through the Holy Spirit. The closer we get to Christ, the more he emanates through us. I pray it so often, God changes from the inside out. And so now when people look at us, 
they can see the image of Christ. And we can point them to the cross. We can say, it's not me, but it's the Jesus in me. <laughs> it's the Jesus in me. And Jesus is real. He's the one that gives us peace. Let's pray together. Father, I pray for all those out there that may not know you. Would you help them right now to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, God, you have raised them from the dead. Ephesians 2, 8 says, it's by grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift from you. Help them to receive that gift right now. Help them to know without a shadow of a doubt that you are so real. Lord, it's my heart, my prayer that breakthroughs be made. Lord, I pray that people are just drawn to you more. They want more of your word. They want Bible studies. They want to seek you, God. Help them in this season and time not to give up, Lord. In this time that we need you more than we ever have, help us to go deeper into you. Lord, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the souls that you're saving and bringing to the knowledge of the truth of you. You are an amazing God. I just love you and I magnify you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I was was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to. Aren't you glad Jesus is real? Well, we have something special today. God has been manifesting himself in an amazing way. He's been saving souls and adding to the body of Christ. And today we have a baptism. Uh, yes, we have a baptism and a testimony from Landon uh, Moore. Uh, God just touched him. Uh, his mom, Ebony Moore, Sheriff Moore, was saying that they were in the house one day and um, he just began to talk about how he wanted to know Jesus. And, and I'm, I'm excited because it just shows that God is the one that shows his grace in our lives. And he's the one that saves when hearts are just turned. And I am glad today uh, to introduce uh, Landon. He's going to give his own testimony. And then we're going to go into a baptism today and just think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done. I don't know when you got baptized. I don't know where you confess Christ. But today, I want you to rejoice with me just as the angels are rejoicing that another soul has been saved and added to the body of Christ. Oh, God is good. My name is Brandon Moore. 
Why do I want to get baptized? I want to see the family that I did not get to see when I was a baby in that. Having Jesus in my heart, doing good things and not bad because Jesus is on the good side. When I die, I want to go to heaven and see Jesus. And these are the reasons why I want to be baptized and become a Christian. Landon, on the profession of your faith and your testimony, I take, take witness, witness of this baptism. baptism in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You, you may, may baptize, baptize your son. I love This certifies that Landon Carter Moore, is that you? All right, was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit uh, the 18th day of November 2020, Ebenezer Baptist Church, Greensboro, North Carolina. And uh, it says, The meaning of baptism. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death that likewise this Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. Amen. 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 Amen.